just want to say um, congratulations. Thank you. On getting the job. And is this your first co head coaching job? Of this level of a pro team, yeah. I've been a head coach many a times for over the last 10, 12 years maybe. But yeah, first of, of here with Division Three and the pro guys. So this is just your next step in the process? Yeah, just next step in the process, yeah. Tell me what this move means to you. Uh, it's huge. It means a lot. Um, I love being in Chattanooga. I love being at the club. Uh, I didn't know much about the city or the community or the club before coming here a few years ago when we played. And then to now this become my home and to have my first opportunity as a head coach in the professional uh, leagues here is huge. Often you have to maybe go elsewhere to a new place that you don't know. So to get to do it some, somewhere that I've already feel part of the, the community, part of the city that I love and know the process has been huge. So that familiarity is pretty cool. For sure, yeah. I think it's, it's maybe rare for most people to get this opportunity to, to grow within somewhere you love. So that's huge. And um, if you could tell me, do you have, can you give some insight into your philosophy as a coach or kind of what kind of team you're looking to build? Uh, yeah, an attacking team, I think, is number one. Obviously, we've seen, I had the two games with the guys, um, a little bit more free flow and attacking, try to create a lot of chances. Um, I am data influenced. So evidence-based coaching, not just for style of play, but in recruitment, how we train, how we interact with guys, I think is huge to try and create that environment where people can learn and be free as well. So I think seeing some more, hopefully ball dominating, but attacking dominating soccer. Is that opposed to kind of holding and building and more? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think we'll, there, there'll be building to create an attack um, and it'll happen maybe a little bit quicker. Than, than previously. Um, like I said, I think we saw in the, the last two games if we can get forward and create chances, that would be the key thing. I think that's what's going to help us win games. It's going to be exciting for the players to be part of, for the fans to watch, and I think that's the, the best approach for it. Who's influenced you most as a coach in terms of kind of how you see the games, either globally or someone you've worked with? Uh, there's probably a lot of people. I think coaching is a lot about stealing and borrowing ideas off of uh, a lot of people, the cool thing about coaching and, and sports is no right or wrong way, so it's more of a stylistic thing. And my dad was a big influence growing up. He was very much into attacking soccer, um, and that was how he coached me when I was like six or seven, and then that's kind of just stuck with, with who I am. And then going through the game, there's, there's coaches of all levels that I've, I've borrowed ideas or stole ideas off, so there'll be a few people. In terms of professional, I think it varies. There's a lot of, of, of cool coaches. I'm a, a Tottenham fan originally, but Arsenal have had some good coaches. Manchester City have a good coaches. So I think any time that I can learn something and be influenced in a positive way is good. So You can kind of watch things and take out what you like. For sure. I mean, I enjoyed watching Pochettino. The US coach was at Tottenham for a long time, and I really enjoyed the football Spurs played then. Um, Tottenham have had maybe not a winning culture but an attacking culture so I think there's lots of positive moments in that and then like I said the top level coaches Guardiola, Bielsa, Klopp, um, there's, all, there's so much to learn from them. What have you learned about the MLS Next Pro this past season and, and how does that kind of set you up or prepare you for next year? Uh, it's been a great setup, it's been a good first year to see one the level of players um, and also the varying ages. It obviously is a younger league but the quality is very high to see how some of the teams um, try to play, link how some are linked close to the first team, some a little bit further away. That's been good to see firsthand. But also to see the quality of, of the games, of how it's not just start like this and both teams start one way. It's adaptations, uh, adaptations throughout the game and then different uh, decisions based on, on those game moments. So that, that's been cool to see. How, was, how did you, what were your thoughts of the league? What, what did you think of it, just kind of as a league, different from Nissa and stuff like that? The quality is very high, technically, individually of the players. I think the understanding and the, and the control, uh, guys don't look as rushed, guys can hurt you a lot more. Individual guys and teams have ideas of those scenarios that they better understand, I guess, the principles of what, what they're trying to do. And then the level of coaching is very high as well. Teams have a plan, teams are aware of what we're trying to do. And like I said, they can adapt and be moldable throughout the game. So it's really enjoyable to be part of, um, to try and find ways of competing as the game goes along. I think it's also great for the fans as well. The games can be a little bit back and forth because of teams are, are battling a bit more for control with different ideas. Not a lot of easy games. There's no easy games. Uh, and that was one thing the guy said as well. Even with teams that are maybe lower in the table, 
you can't tell that it's an easy game as opposed to the team at the top of the table. I think that's that's good for the competitiveness of the league, but also development of the players throughout, that every game is difficult and there's no easy games. And we've seen that with the results. Some of the teams that are first in the league have been beaten by teams that are lower and, and all, all the way in between. These guys are young, but they're talented, aren't they? Yeah, they're very talented, and that's something that you see in the rest of the world. The age doesn't matter as much as ability. So when you're watching these guys, whether it's the 16-year-olds or the 24-year-olds, they can all play. And that, that is a huge thing, I think, for the league, to have that level, that quality across the, the ages now. And it's not just potential young players. There's guys that are, are good for now. And I think we've seen that with, with the, the number of first-team minutes for guys going up and down. So now, right now, as you sit here, are you hard at work on next year? Are you tinkering with the roster? Kind of what's your, what's your off-season look like? Uh, everything. Uh, a lot of stuff, obviously, this first week. Of, of coming in, but yeah, it's looking for um, players to come in. We've, we've spoke with guys about who's been retained, and there's still some discussions going back and forth. And then it's where we can can fill the gaps, to find guys that fit the, the style we'd like, to find guys that fit uh, that fit the city and the community, and, and kind of go with the club. So yeah, it's consistently recruiting, recruiting staff, recruiting players. Um, it's just continual growth. Is there any specific characteristics you look for in a player? Yeah, they'd be really good at football. So. <laughs> no, I think obviously it will be similar to what everybody else says, technical, um, good ability to understand and read the game, um, show that they have a thought process behind it. It's the same, I think, as a lot of people will, and, and we'll see that maybe guys that fit in certain moments of, or principles that maybe come out a little bit more with our style, I think that's where they fit in. Guys that naturally do some of the things that we try to do more often, and I think that helps us align with them. Okay, and the last one here. What, what kind of any message you'd like to give to the supporters or the fans and the, or the you know the Chattanooga community? Yeah, thank you. I think we'll be the first one um, for me and on behalf of all the team in the club. The the fans and the community make this what it is. That's clear when you speak to players, when you speak to staff um, of opposing clubs and and of, of our players and our staff. How great an environment it is to be not just at Finley on game day but going through the city and seeing the identity of the club and, and how it's won so it's it's huge the support and how the fans have continued to, to support regardless of results or times of the year whether it's on the road or at home whether it's on game day or just the middle of the week so yeah thank you so you talked about opposing clubs there real quick you, they, they kind of enjoy playing in that atmosphere yes and no I mean they don't enjoy some of the comments maybe they get in, but that experience of, of being in a fan base that cares, in a community that cares about it, and it makes it a fun game day experience for them. It's very different to maybe some of the other teams that don't quite have that support yet. So that's, that stands out. And that was something that stood out to me when I came here as an opposing coach. Even though some of the specifics weren't quite fun, the whole overall environment and uh, community that was created was, was, was really enjoyable. Even though they're not rooting for you, they're, it's good to have atmosphere. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere, and it's great for the guys they are rooting for and, and what that brings out of them as well. So, I think all the players talk about that helps. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Even it, When we talk to potential recruits, they talk about how much fun it was playing in front of the Chatter Hooligans, playing, playing at Finley, playing in the city as well. So that's huge.